it is my pleasure to welcome back Nathan um, to conclude our program as speakers today um, with a session on reinforcing the importance of being motivated to nail the one percenters. Thanks, Nathan. Thank you. So this, this last session is actually going to change tack quite a lot. Um, I, I want you to think about regret and where that fits in our thinking, in the way we work, in the way we set up our businesses, in the way we operate our businesses. I want you to think about how many times or how often this sort of statement goes through my head or through your head. I wish I had of. I wish I had have done this. I wish I hadn't have done that. I wish I had have done that earlier. The problem that we all face is that we are on a limited time frame. So we do have a reason to try and get things done sooner, a reason to try and prioritise things. And sometimes I think unless we actually go to the trouble of stopping and resetting, we don't do this. We don't actually think about it. So a quick, quick question for you that you, I just want you to ponder for a second is, what do you regret? We've all got regrets. Some of them are really simple things. Some of them go right back to our childhood. It might be that time you knocked off lollies from the, the local shop. But we've all got regrets. If you don't have regrets, you're either under the age of five or you're a sociopath. So we've all got them. And we would love at times to be able to rewind. We would love to be able to go back and have that time again. You hear people say that all the time. I wish I had my time again. Sometimes it might be something that you said. Now, that we know that words are like toothpaste. Once they come out, you can't get them back in. So sometimes it might just simply be, I wish I hadn't said that to either that family member or that staff member or that in that situation. But in terms of your farming, in terms of your lives, we all have these, these regrets. We have some form of regrets. And people say, oh, I live my life with no regrets. That's bullshit. That's something that people say as a throwaway line. What I want you to think about is, is how regrets fit in our system and how we can use them. So a guy called Dan Pink in the US has done some work. He collected 16,000 regrets from across the world. So he actually got people to tell them what their regrets are. And he was able to put them into four really clear categories. And, I, and it helps us actually understand where regret fits for us. So the first one is foundation regrets. Foundation regrets are the sorts of things where we regret that we weren't financially stable. I wish we had done more to get ourselves into a better financial position. Or I wish I'd done more to make sure that, from, in terms of health, I wish I was in a healthier position. There's foundation regrets there that are just the basic human regrets. The next one were boldness regrets. So they are, I wish I had just bloody done that. I wish I'd walked across the room and spoken to that girl. I wish I'd walked across the room and spoken to that guy. I wish I had have asked that question, but I didn't. And the most interesting thing in boldness regrets is that most of the regret comes from not doing rather than doing and failing. So if we go and do something quite bold and it doesn't work, so you go and say to someone, can I do this? Will you come out on a date with me? And they say no, you actually don't carry that around with you. But you do carry around the fact that you didn't go and ask or you didn't try that thing. I, didn't, I wasn't more aggressive in my breeding objective if we're talking about a livestock operation. I didn't make that change early enough. We do carry that regret quite significantly. The other one is moral regrets. So that's that one about knocking off something from the corner shop, or maybe it's in your, in your livestock operation. Maybe it's that we should have done more earlier. I think that's a very real one in livestock. If it comes to welfare, I think there's gonna be a lot of people with some moral regrets. As perspectives change in the world and we look back and say, shit, I should have done something earlier. I think that's a real one, we'll come back to that one. And the one that really jumps out at me, and this is particularly in agriculture, is connection regrets. That is the connection with people. You know how that friendship happens where we've got a friend but we just drift apart. It's not a major thing. I just haven't spoken to them in ages. And then if they get hit by a bus, we say, Shh, I should have picked up the phone. There was actually no reason for me not to have had that conversation with them. There was no reason for me not to have maintained that friendship. That's where these connection regrets come in. Now, from a farming point of view, one of our biggest problems is our work-life balance. Now, this isn't just the farmers in the room. This is stock agents. This is consultants. We all are guilty of it at times, that we get this work-life balance wrong. Now, usually our fallback position is, yeah, but I love my work. That's why I do it all the time. 
my question to you is, does everyone on your farm, does everyone in your family love the work as much as you do? If the reason that you haven't had a holiday in the last two years is because I love the farm, I don't need a holiday, the question I would ask is, does everyone else in your family agree with you? Or is it just quite a selfish position? Now, what I, one, of, one of the great things um, David King, AFL analyst, uses when he's talking about all of the data in the AFL, he says, don't be beaten what you already know. Don't be beaten by what you already know. That is, don't go into a game of football knowing what the opposition is going to do and then be beaten by that same thing. We can be beaten by surprises. We shouldn't be beaten by things we already know. Now, one of the things that happens, and I talked about predicting, we can predict the future. I can predict a whole lot of your regrets. You can predict a whole lot of your regrets. Things that you're going to look back on and think, I wish we had done that sooner. I wish we had done that differently. The number one that comes up in front of me is succession. I wish we had started the conversations earlier. Or I wish we had had more open dialogue amongst people. If you're not having the conversations, you will regret it. It's a really easily forecastable regret that's potentially going to come up for you. I mentioned it before, animal welfare. I don't want to be a part of an industry that says sorry. Sorry that we weren't quite ready for the changing consumer expectations like Ferg talks about. Sorry we didn't make enough changes. Sorry we didn't stop musing early enough. Sorry we didn't perhaps plant enough trees. When's the best time to plant a tree? It's yesterday. How much are we going to regret some of the decisions that we're making on farm? Because this isn't just about us. This is about the next generation as well. We're trying to leave something for the next generation that's better than what we were left. That's part of this whole process. In terms of family, you know, when they, when they talk to kids and they say, what are the, what's the thing that you want more of? It's not PlayStations. It's not iPads. It's time with parents. And yet that's not something that we often afford a lot of. One of the regrets that we often have is this contact with friends, as I said. In terms of farming, and this isn't about, this is, this is changing the, everything that we've talked about today. So everything we talked about today has been bigger, better, doing a better job of it. But what I want you to be really conscious of as well is how much is enough? What is it you're actually trying to achieve in the first place? What's your end point? At the moment, we're seeing lots of people out buying the neighbour's farm. Great. We're seeing land prices go through the roof. Fantastic. But what's it for? This is what I want you to be able to think about. And, and, it, and this is just questions. These aren't, there's no right or wrong answers to any of this. It's you being able to justify it to yourself as well. Is what is it that you're trying to achieve in the first place? The one thing that I know is there's not going to be too many people who get to the end of their day's farming and think, geez, I wish I worked more. There's going to be a lot of people that are going to get to the end of their day's farming and say, geez, I reckon if we had been more efficient, I could have spent more time with the kids. I could have spent more time with the grandkids. I could have spent more time at the beach. Geez, I reckon if we had adopted more of the technology earlier, we could have spent more time with the kids, more time at the beach. We could have gone on those holidays that, that we talked about but just never got around to. The one thing about holidays is they don't happen unless you put them in your calendar. That's the same for all of us. But what I don't want you to do is get to the end and we, don't, we never know when the end is. Never know when the end is. So two of my friends have passed away in their early 50s. They didn't know that was the end. They had no idea that that was going to be the end. But I can guarantee you there's a whole bunch of stuff that they wish they had just bloody done in the first place and not waited because we tend to always say, yeah, we will do that. We will get around to that. So my challenge to all of you on all fronts is to be proactive. You have your opportunity to be de decisive in all of the dec decisions that you make. Set yourself up to actually implement decisions, make sure that you are thinking about your whole family, not just you, and make sure that you're not going to live with regrets. I think your opportunity is to be bold in everything that you do. So if you're going to set up a breeding objective, be bold in it. If you've got things that you want to achieve, be bold in it. Ultimately though, we can learn from our regrets. That's why we're programmed to have regrets. Think about the things that we wish we didn't do, or that we wish we did earlier, and learn from them and change that now. I don't want to be a part of an industry that has to say sorry. I don't want to be part of a farming operation that says, has to say sorry. Sorry we should have planted more trees. Sorry we should have changed our welfare 
system. Sorry, we should have stopped milling earlier. I don't want to be a part of that. After all, whatever we're doing well today, we can do better tomorrow. Thanks very much. Thanks, Nathan. I think you've left everyone with a little bit of thinking to do, those that farm and those that don't. Um, I think you've brought us home strong. Thanks, Nathan. That's it for today's um, seminar. Thanks, guys, so much for your attendance. Um, we really hope that through the speakers you've heard today, you've learnt something new or you've thought about something differently and you can take that home into your own individual enterprises. Um, just a reminder that we are recording today and the video will be uh, available um, soon. Um, so we will be distributing a link to you all once that's available and um, if anyone that you know has missed today but you think would ben benefit from what's been heard, please let them know that that video will be available. Um, just a reminder, if you could please all fill out your evaluation forms and leave with us, um, that would be much appreciated. And I'd like to thank very much all the speakers um, today uh, for their input and, their, and uh, all of you for your attendance today and wish you all a very safe travels home. Thanks very much.